Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. Today, it's a super, super easy, super simple, super tasty beer to go into warmer weather. Cheers. Cheers. That's a magnificent pour. Mm. Thank you, doctor. Wow. That's a tasty beer. Wow. It is my version of a Hellas. It would usually be a Hellas lager, right? but I didn't lager it. And I didn't chill it either, which makes it even more easier. Do you want to hear the details? I'd love to. <laughs> what if you said no? We're waiting with bated breath. <laughs> Mine's a little more bated. <laughs> so <laughs> what if you said no? You don't want to hear the details. No, I don't hear that. <laughs> Be the end of the I episode. I just want to drink it. <laughs> okay. Well, you, you can go ahead while I talk about the details. All right. First of all, you start off with 10 pounds or 4.5 kilograms of German Pilsner malt. That's it. Then... No specialty malts? No specialty malts at all. You can't make a beer without specialty malts. You, you just watch me. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, at, um, uh, at the beginning of a 60 minute boil, I used one ounce or 28 grams of Hollertau Tradition mm -hmm. at 6.1% alpha acid. Five minutes before the end of the boil, I added another one ounce of Hollertau. And then I didn't chill. I just ran the beer off into my no-chill plastic container, that six-gallon food-safe thingy, yep. and I let it cool overnight. And then the next day, I poured it carefully uh, into uh, my glass carboy, and I pitched uh, Imperial Organic Yeast L05 Cable Car, yeah. which is the San Francisco California Common Yeast. It's a San Francisco treat. That's it. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> Which it's a, it's a, uh, it's the yeast that they use for steam beer, which is a trademarked right. style. So you can't say steam beer when you make it and sell no. it. But so they, they call it <clears throat> California Common, which this is the yeast that is a lager yeast that they ferment closer to ale temperatures, which is perfect for this because yep. I put this in the basement and it fermented at 64 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 C. So uh, we left it in the basement, went out of town for spring break for a week. Yeah. So it, it really it was in the basement for two weeks fermenting and I racked it into uh, my keg and I find it with uh, half a packet of gelatin with a cup of water that I warmed up in the, in the microwave mm -hmm. to like 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 170, just to pasteurize it. Right. I put it in the keg uh, before I racked the beer in. And uh, here, you know, a couple week, week or two later, here we are. Um, original gravity 1048, final gravity 1010, uh, ABV 5%. Very tasty. What do you think? I think it's really nice. Um... You know, I'm, all, I'm on this beer tasting like beer kick, and again, different than your 200 clone, mm -hmm. which is a beer that tastes like a beer. This, this is an old school beer to me. This is what um, I think of when I think of, there used to be a beer called Blatt's. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> You've never had a Blatt's. It's also the sound you make after you drink it. <laughs> yeah. But Blatt's had this really nice, what I liked about it, of the factory beers. I think it was probably a Milwaukee beer, though I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But And also the old old Schlitz, old Schlitz. <laughs> Which is also the sound. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get the Blatt's and the Schlitz. <laughs> And then that's when you, if you order a couple of greasy dicks, you ever, you ever had a greasy dick? Slow down. Well, these are real beers. These are real German beers. Anyway, this beer reminds me, you know, it's malty. It's the hops are there, but it's not big and piney. It's not big and citrusy. Right. It's that floral, floral, herbal, noble hop mm -hmm. flavor. And there's a reason why there are noble hops. There's a reason why... You know, a straight ahead beer, just Pilsner malt, mm -hmm. beautiful. Absolutely it's it's just the bitterness is just enough to yeah. balance the maltiness. Uh, there is a little bit of herbal or you know that that old world kind of hop character to it, but you know it's uh, not about the hops. It's about it's about the malt. It's about the malt. It, 
I suppose it could be a little fruitier than it might have been if you'd really lagered it and really mm. done it at low temperature. But honestly, without a side by side, we'll yeah, never know. It, you know, you'll never know. And it's just a it's just a lovely summer beer. Now I mentioned that I was doing this uh, to Ben Mills, who's the the owner and and head brewer at, at Fossil Cove Brewing here in Northwest Arkansas. Yeah, and he said, you know, you're going to put you know, 100% Pilsner malt straight into a no-chill container and, and top and cap it off. Aren't you worried about DMS? You know, which, well, you know, it's a traditionally you say, you know, with the Pilsner malt, you need to blow all that stuff off. Yeah. I don't get any corny. Get DMS is no. dimethyl sulfate. Five, I'll put it on the screen. Yeah. DMS, <laughs> a little bit is okay in this style. But I don't get any at all. It, any. It's a corny mm -hmm. uh, character to the beer, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I don't get it uh, yep. at, at all. This is just a super, super clean beer. Um, and so the, uh, the, this is the second beer that I've brewed recently with this no-chill technique. Uh, and I, I love it because you don't have to pull out the wort chiller. Uh, you don't have to pull out the garden hoses, you know, it's just extra time that you have to do on the, on brewing day. Well, and you're not pouring a lot of water down the drain or... Right, right. You know, it's it's more economical. But the drawback is that your your brewing day is now two days. True. Because, or a, or a day and a portion of a day, because you have to come back the next day mm -hmm. uh, and then and when the word is chilled, or cooled mm -hmm. and rack it into a fermenter. So you gotta take time to sanitize the fermenter and then you gotta take time to clean the, you know, the plastic container after you're done. Yeah. So there is a little bit of work on the next day, which is, you know, I'm not a huge favor or fan of, but it's not a whole lot of work. No, it's, it's not. And I don't see any disadvantage to it other than perhaps if you were brewing um, a big hoppy New England, you know, or big West Coast IPA, which mm -hmm. is just all about that big hop flavor. Maybe it fades some. I don't know. I don't have no. I've never done it, so that's the only thing that I could think of that might be a drawback to doing it that way. Um, well, I've got a, I've got a beer in the pipeline that's a Belgian style golden ale with lots of uh, hops added at the at flame out right before I put it into nice. the no chill container. So yeah. So we'll get to test that out on a coming episode. So there you go. Super easy, a super quick brew day. Yeah. I brewed on St. Patrick's Day. This is oh, wow. my St. Patrick's beer. <laughs> so it's not it's not a month old yet. Uh no. Hmm. No. That's amazing. So yeah. And and clear as a whistle. How um how much did it clear out after you find it, do you think? Do you or do you have any way to even know? Uh, it, it was a little cloudy, uh, you know, going in there. Who knows uh, if, it, if it would have cleared out this much without the gelatin, um, but I think the gelatin did, did help. I'm uh, sure it did. It so. had to have. Well, it's a lovely beer. It's definitely worth making a beer like this. Um, it, it's nice because, again, it tastes like a beer, and it, it kind of, you know, there's nowhere to hide. Mm. You know, you can't yeah. hide by throwing in 48 kinds of, Specialty malts and, you know, and some pumpkin spices, some pumpkin spice and some this and that, um, which is nothing wrong with doing nothing, that. I don't, not that there's nothing. anything wrong with it. Uh, but there's a, this is a pleasure to drink a beer like this. And I can't imagine that your friends out there who don't drink craft beer oh. wouldn't like this. Yeah. I think of my brothers, and they, actually they do drink craft beer, but nonetheless, if you go to their house and you open the fridge... It's going to be bush light. <laughs> it's going to be Coors light at the other brother's house. Well, I'm hoping this is a step up. It's definitely a step up. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Happy brewing. Happy brewing. Come and visit us online. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs and our brewer's logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. If you're in Fayetteville, Arkansas, stop by Steve's Brew Shop or find him online at stevesbrewshop.com. It's scrummy, as Mary Berry would say. <laughs>